All right, we are back in game, and hopefully I'm a little bit a uh, little bit more spot on. I'm going to switch these around because you know I don't need to confuse myself any more than I already have. There we go. All right, <laughs> a little bit of a rough start. I'm sorry about that, folks. So, again, we are on the uh, high school challenger league tournament from Hawaii. I am Joshua Fekas Quest. We're gonna have a little fresh start here. Had a little bit of a mishap earlier, not putting in my stream key properly for the eSports High. We got it now, though. And, uh, you, Lonnie, looks like they're taking a defensive stance, especially around that bot area, around the, uh, around their red. Meanwhile, Peanut Jelly gonna be scoping out in the, their blue, make sure no one comes over and invades, but it looks like Layla, who was just gonna, gonna hang back and take a defensive position all by themselves, forming a line of scrimmage there. coming out. Not much happening. So we got some Adoran's Shield start uh, coming out from Sprigster. That's pretty normal for a Thresh. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. You know what? I'm going to turn music on in this. I'm going to have a s music on slightly. Not too much. Minions have spawned. It's a little bit. I don't think it's going to hurt. I actually turned it off earlier for the tournament, but I don't think it's going to hurt too bad. Either way. There we go. So then... Yeah, Peanut Jelly has a very, uh, very sustaining top lane start with uh, the Chris, uh, the uh, yeah, Crystal Crystalline Flasks, a health pot, and a mana pot. Surprising to see a mana pot on a on a singe early in, in the top lane, but it's going to be going uh, against a Renekton who has a Doran Shield. So, I mean, a uh, decently standard start. I mean, a Doran Shield against a singed, uh, it's not a huge thing to it. I mean. I think a Doran's Blade honestly would have been fine, would have helped him trade a little bit better against the Peanut Jelly, but it's going to help him sustain in lane as well. So if he can stay away from Singe and just farm his lane uh, until until Renekton gets level 6, should be fine in that lane, no problem. Um, but yeah, okay, so back to support. So a little uh, Ancient Coin being taken from from Janna, and I think she can go both ways with the Spell Thief's Edge and the uh, Ancient Coin. I think both of them work out for her, so this isn't going to be too bad. She's not going to want to get too close to get uh, to be able to get hooked too by easy. Sprigster. So, I mean, I think the Ancient Coin's a good start. Also has that extra ward, and have a little bit of extra vision and control in the bot lane early on. And of course, mid lane started pretty standard. Well, pretty standard there. And there's the hook that we were talking about. And actually, there's a little displacement from uh, Aloha, but either way, Ignite does, gets, uh, does get put down by Will of the Squid. Willy the Squid onto Aloha. He's going to walk out of there alive, and it looks like he's going to try to stay in lane. Is popping a health pot. Or actually already popped his health pot, I should say. So he's got a little bit to go. Already has, actually has a barrier popped as well, so he's in a bad situation in the bot lane. He's going to have to play real careful from here on out. Like there's going to be a gank coming out from the mid lane from the great Saiyan man, and I'm actually going to switch my view over there because he is looking to get in there. He is level three. He has his clone. He has his red buff, so he has a little bit to work with to try to get O pops. Uh, well, try to get Eternal Blade eight away to for first blood or even himself uh, first blood onto O pops. There's the clone in the mid lane. Here it is. There's the knight coming down onto O pops. He blows himself away with this south charge and popping his health pots. He's going to be fine. So no first blood in the mid lane today, or at least for this uh, for this minute. He still Opops does have his barrier and his flash up, so he still has a little bit more a uh, little bit of defense left in that in that mid lane. So I think he'll be all right. It looks like uh, Livid's gonna come around. He's not gonna he's not gonna do too much. Blaster uh, or no Eternal Blade. Sorry, just to back up a little bit. Eternal Blade actually has no wards in the river, so he just backed up, uh, I guess instinctual, or even was just uh, going to go farm from underneath his turret. Either way. So not much too ha- uh, not too much happening, I should say. The Pina Jelly going to go back already in this top lane. Doesn't have the teleport, so he's gonna have to walk all the way back. But he has Renekton shoved all the way to his turret, and actually he's gonna be canceled his back and just uh, stay in lane a little bit. He has full health, no reason to actually uh, 
no reason to go back yet. I mean, he could buy a tier to the goddess if he decides to build that first. Let's see how it goes. See how it works out for him. A lot of emphasis being put on this bot lane right now from the automated camera. Brought to you by Riot Headquarters. Riot Gaming, I should say. And I guess that is the uh, the biggest point right now. And actually, the peanut jelly did go back and did pick up his tier of the goddess. So yeah, he's gonna start up that stack uh, pretty fast, pretty early. Gonna try to scale into the mid game quicker. Play the uh, blaster eight two eight, looking for a little bit of aggression with that knockup, but the knockup missed. Didn't get much onto Aloha. And uh, props to Aloha has actually been able to lifesteal his way back into that lane right now. He's over half health, and uh, he does have two lifesteal quints on, so he's been able to been able to get himself back. And his barrier is almost up, so it's actually a pretty good position for him. He's down a little bit in CS, but that's not too telling right now. Only about four CS. With Tumble, it's actually easy to, um, to last hit underneath the turret. And it looks like in the mid lane, Opops has Eternal Blade 808 shoved up under tower pretty hard. And he is losing out on some, on some CS. He's already down 11 CS in that mid lane. So he's going to have a little bit of a rough time. If Opops can keep him shoved, and uh, he'll slowly get the advantage. With that being said, though, he's going to be overextended. He only has vision on one side of the uh, of the river. I've pointed this out before. There's an early pink ward in there, and we'll go and mark it at seven minutes. See how long it lasts in that bush. That's something I do like to keep track of. So Aloha doing really well. Like I said, farming his turret. Uh, still only about four or five uh, CS uh, difference right now. Willie to squick and throw down a shield on the blaster 828, give himself a little bit more power behind his spinning axes, but he does get hooked with the death sentence. No, he actually gets condemned into the wall too, has to blow his barrier, Ignite gets thrown down to him, but too much damage going down to Aloha, and actually gets the first blood going over to blaster 828, he does survive, the great Saiyan man is around, making his way to the bot lane, there are no wards uh, from Iulani. So this might actually be a kill being picked up from the Great Saiyan Man. Here comes Dark, Dark Passage. Blaster 828 going to get out of there. Will it a squid? Going to get hooked with the with the Adestins and flayed back. We'll see if they can get out of there. Not much to follow it up. Great Saiyan Man does not have red. So Will the squid just walks. Willie the squid just walks out of there. Meanwhile, in top lane, Insanity Potion being popped from Dupina Jelly. He gets quite a bit of damage being put onto him, but he's going to re reach in a lot of that. He still has Crystalline Flash, still has Health Pots. He's proxying the wave uh, already, the top lane. And there's a Vault Breaker onto Livid and a Mega Inferno Bomb. Not going to hit anybody. Eternal Blade 808. Very, uh, very quick to react with his belly flop, a uh, belly slam. Body slam, I guess it's technically called. As uh, that Pink Ward is giving him a vision, gave him vision of Livid walking into the mid lane. Looks like both mid, uh, mid laners going to take their respective blue buffs already. Oh, Dupina Jelly almost getting caught out there in the enemy jungle. He's going to go back. And that actually, that actually wastes uh, Renekton's time. He's losing a wave to to what's the, uh, Shin's, uh, I guess, not Shin's, Shin's uh, Singes, Singes. Dupina Jelly's uh, antics, I should say. He's, uh, he lost out on a wave up there, just trying to look for him, but there's aggression going on the bot lane. The Whirling Death actually going to pick up a kill for Blaster 828, 200 now in that bot lane. And there's aggression from Eternal Blade 808 in the mid lane, throwing out his explosive cast, but also an ult coming out in the jungle. Livid going to assault and batter the Great Saiyan Man and actually flash over to him and pick up the kill, along with a buff transfer, I believe that was. And either way, Livid does have the red buff of, uh, of the Great Saiyan Man. So Iolani starting out strong in uh, mid lane, bot lane, and the jungle right now. And I say mid lane because there is a huge uh, minion difference right now. 78 to 50. Both the, uh, both the mid laners have very similar starts. The Chalice of Harmony and the Doran's Ring. They're beneficial to both the mid laners, so there's really no reason not to get that sort of, th uh, sort of start. To have that sort of start, I should say. 
bit of aggression. Going in the top lane. Dipina Jelly just look, looking to be a nuisance. As big of a nuisance as possible. He's 20 CS up. There's no reason to really kill, go for a kill on Renekton right now. Uh, besides to shut him down a little bit. But if you can deny him farm and get yourself farmed up, then you can scale into the, the mid game better than he can. So it's a great play from uh, Tapina Jelly. As you can see, he's going to have trouble actually trading uh, with a Renekton. But like I said, if he can keep that CS gap, keep him distracted to where he uh, Renekton loses out on CS because it's pushing to his tower, that's going to work out in Tapina Jelly's favor. It's going to work out in Iolani's favor. Because like I said, uh... Uh, Dabina Jelly is going to transition to the mid game a lot stronger than the Renekton. Speaking of transition in the bot lane, last rate 2 8, going to keep that wave shoved. It looks like both junglers are making their way down to the bot lane right now. This is going to be some action coming out. I'm going to keep the camera locked down here. If Sprixter can, uh, if Sprixter can land a uh, death sentence, it will be a pretty successful gank for the Great Saiyan, man. I think he's waiting for the Dark Passage to come out. Not much is happening. Livid way down in the bush here too, so there's a gank. There will be a counter gank from Livid. Looks like both junglers may be wasting their time, although oh, it looks like the Great Saiyan man was going to go in. I think he's going to look to use a clone pretty soon here, and actually he's going to come in. Bricks are going to keep them distracted. This is going to be pretty much an all-in. Both of them alt right in. Assault and battery going down Al uh, Aloha, and he actually gets taken down by Livid. And uh, barely any of the health bars touch on Iulani. They're going to tower dive this right now. Livid taking up turret shots. Bricks are going to go down, though. And there's a heal coming out from uh, Willy the Squid. And it looks like Grey Saiyan trying to get aggressive. Not going to work out. No, actually gets a kill on to Livid from the turrets. But there's two kills going over to Blaster828 within that skirmish. So that was very much in the favor of Iolani. They're going to have that tower exposed. They were already beaten down on it. Doesn't have much to go. First tower of the game, more than likely going to go to Iolani. And yeah, there it goes down. Red team's turret has been destroyed. It's a very, uh, uh, very impressive play in the bot lane from Iolani right now. Like I said, Blaster828 playing the Draven uh, Koreshin game very well against Aloha's Vayne, who Vayne pretty much just wants to farm for uh, a good amount of time in the top lane, or the, uh, in the bot lane. And uh, last year, 828, denying as much as much of that farming phase as possible for Aloha. Very well played. It looks like Opops does have his ult up, but Livid is hanging around the mid lane, doesn't have his ult up though. And uh, oh, Vina Jelly is attracting a little bit too much attention up top now for uh, Layla Hua. That's going to really pressure onto other lanes as uh, Great Saiyan Man has to go up there. As you can see, Renekton's tower is actually almost down. That's pretty much just with uh, minion uh, minion damage. Pina Jelly proxying this lane very well. He's 30 uh, CS ahead. Coming out on top in this lane already, especially in gold. He's 800 ahead in gold right now. Looks like Livid is going to hang out in mid lane as well. There was an Assault and Battery not actually placed down. He doesn't have it up right now. Oh, Pops. He needs to be cautious going into that on these all-ins. Either way, top lane turret finally going down. Dominus being popped as well as the Sanity Potion from Dapina Jelly. And uh, he's going to gonna just poison him around. There's an Ignite going down onto Dapina Jelly, but it's returned in kind onto Renekton. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Aloha finding himself in a bad situation again. Another kill going over Blaster 828. In top lane, though, Flash being popped from Renekton. Dapina Jelly going to just run him out of the lane and go back. He has quite a bit of gold in the bank. 1,600 right now. Yeah, it's a uh, job well done in the top lane from Dapina Jelly. No one has strengths and weaknesses with uh, between Renekton and Singed. Played that lane very well. He actually picked up a very early um, Thorn Mail. Usually you see Singes go more of a more offensive utility, I guess you'd say, with the uh, uh, Rylai's Crystal Scepter. And maybe even upgrading the the tier so it can stack a little bit faster. But he decided to go more uh, more defensive, and it looks like he's going to go up top lane. And I think that's just to to shove that lane even more, proxy it even more, maybe even uh, between the inner and the inhibitor turret in the top lane, and try to attract more attention from the great Saiyan man in the top lane. So very well played from Dapina Jelly. Not losing a step on that singed, doing well on him, doing very well against the Renekton. 
Renekton does have a Spirit Visage built already. So he's not going to be taking too much damage from the poison the poison trail of uh, the peanut jelly. But, I mean, like I said, with Thornmail on his side, Singe isn't really going to have too much of a time dueling or even tower diving a Renekton. It looks like the Great Saiyan Man is not even going to worry about this top lane right now. As he's making his way toward the uh, bottom half of the jungle. <laughs> Peanut Jelly spamming that laugh key. That's one of the best things you can do as a singe. So I think... So yeah, that word's still there. Just want to point that out. It's been like... Like eight minutes now. Six, uh, eight minutes, nine minutes. A considerable amount of time for 100 gold. And it looks like actually Livid might be finally picking it up. There it goes. So yeah, nine minutes into that to get the, uh, the pink word... Very much worth the 100 gold that was invested into it. I do like to point those out every time. Sorry if you get tired of it, but it's relevant because we'll need to go through those that push more often. It looks like Livid looking for a gank in the bot lane. Does have a splash. Might be looking for a flash vault breaker over the wall into and underneath the tower into Aloha. So he's going to back off. And, oh, no, he's going to stay there. Here it comes. There's the, uh, actually, is the vault breaker and the assault and battery along with Whirling Death is going to all fall onto Aloha. He does condemn Livid away. And actually flash over and picks up a kill onto Sprigster. Aloha does make it out, though. So I guess mission accomplished for Sprigster, I guess you could say. But damage done. Turret uh, being taken out quite a bit. Three turrets to zero already at the 16-minute mark. 16.50, we'll say 17-minute mark. Why not? 10k gold separating these two teams right now. And even more now that the turret went down. The peanut Jelly going to spam that laugh key. Like I said, it seriously is one of the most intimidating things you can do as a singed. Oh, there's a uh, gank coming out in the mid lane underneath the turret. Cyclone does go out, but Opops picks up the kill with his Mega Infernal Bomb onto Eternal Blade 808. That's oh, Peanut Jelly uh, getting a little bit overzealous there. It's overseeing his welcome. Gets hooked by Sprigster and gets a kill over to the Great Saiyan Man. Second kill for Le uh, Leila Hua in this game. They're not faring too well in objectives or go or uh, or kills. They're just trying to come back as much as they possibly can. A kill's a kill for the for anybody uh, down that much. They're happy to have it. Giant's belt being picked up from Dapina Jelly might be looking to that uh, for that um, Rylai's crystal scepter now. And Aloha, uh, not doing too bad on farm, given his situation. He actually has quite a bit of farm for having four deaths. I'm very surprised. But doesn't have enough for that build for, for the Blade of the Rune King. Actually, no, he does have enough for the Blade of the Rune King now. If he goes back, does have the uh, have the money to finish his. He does have two daggers in his uh, in his item inventory right now, along with that Bilge Water Cutlass. So again, he's just looking to uh, the farm as much as possible. Plus, three, two, eight. Gonna go down there and interrupt his fun though. Throws the standard sign out. Does actually get it? So that's gonna slow down Alohog. Condemns Blaster eight, two, eight, but uh, gets and gets a flash out of Blaster as well. There's a whirling death as well. Might actually be a kill. Is a kill. A lot of damage coming out already from uh, Blaster eight, two, eight. Has that bloodthirst? Has a pickaxe. And for what it's worth, the Doran's Blade as well. And now Sprixter in a bad situation. Not going to find a way out of there. Blaster 8 goes godlike with his Draven play right now. Been pretty dominant on all fronts. Anywhere he goes. 7 0 2 right now. Hasn't died this entire game. May go legendary before the end of it. Meanwhile, in top lane, Peanut Jelly looking to be as much of a nuisance as possible. Inks. He's been doing it the entire game. Looking to keep that going. He tracks a great save, man, in the top lane. Cyclone is up, but, I mean, so is the Sanity Potion. I don't believe, I don't think they can lock down a Peanut Jelly enough. There's the Sanity Potion being popped. Oh, the, okay, there's a Flash Cyclone coming out. Gonna catch the Peanut Jelly, but he's still just gonna run off. And actually, no, one run back in. And try to keep both of them up there as much as possible. While the, the action goes on in the mid lane, Mega Inferno Bomb from Opops does pick up a kill onto Aloha. Limit does fall from a, a uh, the Ignite of Eternal 808, Eternal Blade 808, I should say. Meanwhile, the Peanut Jelly still being a nuisance in that top lane drives the Great Saiyan Man back. That was a gank in the top lane, the Flash and the Cyclone being burned to try to lock down a Peanut Jelly. Not happening though. A little bit too aggressive, uh, too too uh, slippery, I guess I should say. That top lane. Meanwhile, 
Willie to Squid and Blaster828 haven't left bot lane, and there's really no reason not to right now. They've been shoving in the turrets, and pretty much uncontested. Anytime they try to, uh, anytime Layla Hua try to go down and contest it, they get uh, usually end up giving a couple lives for it for almost for essentially nothing besides uh, stall time. But with the inhibitors, the uh, inhibitor tower, the only one up in that bot lane, it's not going to take much time for Layla Hua to swing around, defend the mid lane and the bot lane. So I think it's about time for Blaster 828 and Willie to Squid to maybe focus on a different lane, and that's what they're doing. They're going to go to the mid lane, shove in the mid lane inhibitor, uh, mid lane inner turret, I should say. Expose that inhibitor turret. Let's try to snowball this game a little bit more than uh, Heelani's already done it. Jelly still in that top lane, still hitting turrets, still proxying the wave. I guess, uh, I guess the old saying, uh, "Don't fix it, it's not broke," coming into play here. As you can see, Grace say, man, not even gonna worry about the top lane anymore. He tried once, can't really do anything about it. Explosive cask is up. I'm surprised we haven't seen it onto Blaster Eight to Eight to try to. Uh, Try to get him out of position and into the bad position, uh, into the, into the enemy's uh, grasp there. But here it comes. There's explosive cask and last raid to wait. Gonna pop his barrier and actually pick up a kill out of that with his whirling death and go to legendary. He's actually still alive. The, oh my god, the life steal on him is way too strong. Not to mention Willie to squids monsoon. Gonna heal him up quite a bit. There's a Aloha getting ignite thrown down onto him and a vault breaker along with that. But Willie the squid does pick up a kill onto that one. Uh, Mega Inferno Bomb, not gonna reach in time before Blaster828 picks up another kill. This is Iolani just walking all over Layla Hua. As a mid lane inhibitor going down, uh, mid lane inhibitor turret, I should say, inhibitor is going down now. Sprixter, well, actually, Eternal Blade 808, great same man, and Sprixter making their way over, but damage done, inhibitor down. Dragon is live. I don't even know if Dragon's really worth anything right now. I mean, of course it's worth gold. You can shove your team into a uh, beneficial position, but I mean, with Iolani already in a huge benefit uh, uh, position for pretty much dominating this game right now. I mean, they don't really need the Dragon Gold, but they are denying it from Layla Hua. So they're going to keep them down even more than they already are. These bouncing bombs gonna do a number on the health bars of Layla Hua. They have really have nothing to uh, compete with the Rabadon's death cap at 23 minutes, along with an Athens and Holy Grail and some uh, magic penetration with the Sorcerer's boots. So each bouncing bomb is gonna do quite a bit of damage, no matter who it hits at this point. There's only uh, only Renekton and Gragas have have magic resist right now. And Demetrius Jelly, like I said, business as usual, proxying that wave. Going to get a couple hits on the top turret, and then just going to do it again when another wave comes back. Iolani's about, oh, about, what is it, 19k ahead in this game right now as far as gold is concerned. They are shoving into Layla Hua's base. Actually, only two of them are shoving into Layla Hua's base. Meanwhile, Draven Vi and Janna going to gonna start up the uh, Baron and he's falling very quickly yeah not really much uh, Baron could do against the onslaught of a of an infinity edge bloodthirster static shiv and pickaxe um, uh, Draven that's all at 24 minutes he has an insane amount of gold right now getting quite a bit of adoration stacks in fact let's see how much adoration he's got here he's got over he's got 1500 gold from his adoration that is incredible that is a huge boost. That is almost a, uh, a BF sword. But either way, Opop's getting jumped on here. The final hour getting, getting popped from Aloha, but he gets taken down with the Mega Inferno Bomb. Meanwhile, in top lane, the rest of uh, Iolani going to shove into the turret, into the top lane inhibitor turret. Blaster doing quite a number on those turrets, on that turret. Meanwhile, that's just the Opop's uh, auto attack passive from Ziggs. So yeah, not really much Layla Hua can do. They're just stalling out time. Plotting for their next uh, their next game. This is a uh, best set of uh, two out of three, best of three game, I should say. 
Oh, there's a Blaster A2A being caught and knocked out with a Cyclone. He's gonna flash out of there, but he's still in a bad way here. Whirly Death still gonna net a kill for him. He's still alive. Ignite is on him. He does get shut down by Eternal Blade 808, but I mean, it's really just for show right now. There's a Satchel Charge. Satchel Charge? I, yeah, there's a Satchel Charge picking up a kill. By, uh, from a Fort Opop, just say, onto Aloha. Aloha did really well as far as farm for given the position that he was in, but he's still in 0-9-2 in this game. He's been focused quite a bit out of position. And uh, yeah, Iolani just looking to secure this one down. Both Nexus turrets are down. Actually, every turret is down for Layla Hua. Only the Nexus remains. They're going to move on to game number two. Game number one being picked up rather easily, rather decisively by Iolani.